Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. Since the start of the season, this fusion rifle has been a persistent mystery. It's called Scatter Signal. What makes this weapon mysterious is that its law tab looks like this. Now, obviously, we can't read numbers from any of this, but the more code-minded amongst you might be able to see that this fusion rifle's law tab is made up of code and that that is hexadecimal, or hex code, to be precise. Luckily for us, we can take this law tab's hex code and dump it into a hex translator. From here, the law is decoded, and the real mystery lies before us. So, what does the law say? Let's start there, and then I'll get into the deeper mysteries and talk about what I think is going on here. Wait, this is just a bunch of malware. Oh, I, I, mm, I see what this really is. It's an attempt by the Vex to release their corruptive code into our own networks and computers here. This could lead to a, any number of terrible things, from alternate timelines, or hundreds of copies of us being simulated by the Vex in tandem, or some kind of terrible... Uh, uh, oh, okay, it's... I mean, that's bad, It's, but it is just a... I mean, it's a phishing attempt, that's not great. Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, of course, this is Ashamir trying to tell us what the secrets of the Veil are. Right. Yeah, okay. Good thing we knew that wasn't the case, though, because we had protection against this kind of phishing attack, thanks to the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. You can get this level of protection online, too, simply by checking the link down below in the description. That way, when you see a dodgy link like this one in an email, we get a warning that it's probably not trustworthy and that we shouldn't be clicking it. Nord is, of course, also well known for its VPN services, but it can protect you from even more kinds of online attacks. Malware, DDoS attacks, man-in-the-middle attacks, password attacks. The Vex tried all of these, and every single one of them failed. <laughs> what do you make of that, Eris? They take us for fools. <laughs> Suckers. Seriously, though, it's never a good time to be targeted by cyber attacks online, so check the link down below and get protected. It is a 30-day risk-free trial down in the link in the description with a money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied with the product. Don't be complacent. Get four months extra on a two-year plan here. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Anyway, here's the real law. Take a listen to this law tab from Scatter Signal. NMO, monitor spike 003. Tracking. Tracking. NMO, monitor spike 003. Signal lead. Signal lock. NMO, monitor spike 003. Feed established. A churning singularity of shadow and mimicry beats again within cultivated chaos. Minds orbit its gravity to bridge communion with a voice, to move from parallel to entanglement. They dream of a dark core contained within a timeless structure, a suspended return to the primordial. If not for this truth, why kneel? If not for this truth, why does it elude definition? Though not all agree on all, all agree on this. Sol is salvation. Now on the face of it all, this is a pretty vague message, but there are hints at who this might be in that message. In particular, the mention of salvation at the end and the mention of minds and truth it all speaks to the involvement of either the Witness or the Vex of the Soul Divisive. A surface examination of the message would logically allow us to conclude that this is a message concerning either of the two, maybe between two of them. The Soul Divisive Vex, as a refresher, are the Vex of the Black Garden, who turned to worshipping the darkness and who created the Black Garden's heart on the orders of the Witness. They're different from most other Vex, given that most others will actively flee the forces of the Witness, because it represents a paracausal force that they cannot hope to succeed against. The Soul Divisive saw the Witness on the other hand and calculated that their best option was to bind themselves to this greater force, becoming one with it, so that they might survive. Breaking down the message line by line is something that I want to do in a bit, but first, I think we need to look at the message in further context. After all, the law tab starts with some lines prior to this signal. You know, the bit where it says NMO monitor spike 003 a bunch. 
What does all of that mean? Well, let's start there and then we'll work out the rest. NMO is used in a few different places throughout the lore of this season. In particular, take a look at the Worm Guard armor set here. This is a point at which you see someone called NM-001 instead of NMO. The conversation features Eris Morn on the other line, but NM-001 is actually Osiris in this instance. Given Osiris's more recent excursions to the Vale, and his close involvement on Neptune with the Cloud Striders, I think it's logical to assume that the NM at the start here stands for Neomuna. That's actually going to be very important for this next bit of theory that I want to present to everyone. And it's theory because, yeah, from here on out we're doing a little bit of guesswork. Compelling as it may be, it is still guesswork. Note how you see monitor spikes being mentioned in those opening lines. Monitor spikes seem to imply that Osiris is listening for something. Messages perhaps generally, but you know, maybe it's just one of those things where he set things up to study the veil and in the process, this kind of equipment was used. Regardless, we know this. Osiris is the one who has intercepted or received this message on one of his monitor spikes. So I guess the question is, what exactly is he intercepting? I mean, yes, it's a message, but how does the message get sent? What kind of signal is this? And what does it tell us about the way that it's being sent? That's all actually a very important series of details if this all rings true. And the reason I say I think it's important is because I think I might know the answer to what kind of signal this is, because it's in the name of the weapon. Scatter signal. So what is that referring to? My speculation starts here, so take everything from this point out with a pinch of salt. I think that the scatter signal's name is referring to a means by which one can send a message called scatter propagation. So what, what the hell is a scatter propagation signal? Well, let's do a little bit of science. My apologies to anyone who actually understands this in far greater depth than I do. I'm going to try and do my best to explain tropospheric scatter, and if I absolutely butcher it, I'm so sorry. When you're sending a message nowadays, you're often using a satellite to get the message through. But we've not even been in space for a hundred years. Prior to all of this, everything was done via radio. Back in the day, you could use a low-frequency crystal radio and that'd be relatively powerful as a means of long-distance communication, but there's also a means of sending and receiving radio signals at high frequency over shorter distances. That is called tropospheric scatter. A scatter signal, if you will. This kind of communication is made using radio waves in the ultra and super high frequency bands. Typically, tropospheric scatter uses frequencies at roughly 2 GHz, but it can operate between 1 and 20 GHz. That's a very large band of ranges, and it's all very high. But why does any of this matter for this particular signal? What's going on about it? The real answer to this is because it's all about range, and this is where the scatter part of scatter signal becomes relevant and why I think it matters here. So get this, right? The radio waves that are being received, okay? They're on very high radio frequencies between 1 and 20 gigahertz. And the reason why that ends up being short range is because of something known as tropospheric scatter. Basically what you'll do is you'll send out your radio waves in the direction of the horizon. And those radio waves will all spill outwards from that particular point. They will then bounce on the uppermost layer of the atmosphere being projected back down. A little bit like a ball on a billiards table bouncing off one of the sides. This then bounces the signal back down to the planet on the opposite point of the horizon signal. Unlike low frequency radios, however, this means that messages sent by tropospheric scatter can only reach beyond the horizon. On Earth, that's something within 60 kilometers at most. Compare that to shortwave radio signals, which could be carried all the way around the world, and suddenly you start to make a connection here. This message, if it was sent by scatter propagation, if this scatter signal was picked up, it's got to have come from the local area. It won't have come from space, and it won't have come from the other side of the planet. Whoever was sending out this message that Osiris picked up is within two visual horizons of the Monitor Spike 003. And given that all of this is connected to Osiris's NM terminal on Neomuna, this makes me believe that this signal is being sent and received on Neptune, specifically in the area local 
to Neomuna itself. So these are the base assumptions. The signal being sent is being sent by radio waves using scatter propagation. If that is the case, the sender is within two visual horizons of the monitor spike. I'm also assuming that the monitor spike belongs to Osiris, is on Neomuna, and has been set up with a purpose of gathering data. We do not know a lot about the sender, but we do know that they are nearby. Now that we've done this, this is the point at which I want to break down the lore tab line by line, because it starts to indicate some very interesting things from the very outset of it all. You'll start to see what I mean in a bit. I will say, though, that as I break all these things down, this is just my speculation and it's my ideas of what's going on here. None of this is set in stone, none of it is guaranteed, none of it is confirmed, so don't take any of this as gospel, this is just my best guesses at current. Okay, so, line by line, here's the first line. A churning singularity of shadow and mimicry beats again within cultivated chaos. The vagueness of this lore tab starts right at the beginning, but it also starts with some terrifying possibilities that I wanted to talk about. And I kid you not, theory this may be, but if it's correct, I think this is entirely the central point of what's going to happen in Final Shape. A churning singularity of shadow and mimicry that beats again. That's not distinct until you think about it. The first hint is the word beating. No, this isn't the beating of a drum. At least I don't think so. This is more likely, in my mind, to be the beating of a heart. And where the Vex and the Witness are concerned, there is only one heart that ever bound them together, and that was the heart of the Black Garden. The Black Garden's heart was always shifting in its spherical form. That movement could accurately be described as churning, and the shape could most definitely be described as a singularity of shadow. Shadow and mimicry are also important words here too, given that we now know that the heart of the Black Garden was meant to be a failed, flawed copy of the Veil. So this is making reference to the heart of the Black Garden. Except, I mean, ten years ago we destroyed that thing. And we now have this message telling us that this heart beats again, which implies that somehow it's been recreated but we went to the Black Garden as recently as with the Wishkeeper missions, and we know that the Neomuni were able to get backdoor access into the Black Garden via their own means. Rohan and Nimbus have both gone there. We followed them in the process of the post-campaign quests in Neomuna. So we would have noticed if the Black Garden's heart had been returned, right? We even went and killed the mind holding the copy of those designs back in the aftermath of the Lightfall campaign. Where is that second churning singularity of shadow and mimicry that's now beating once more? Where is this new heart of the Black Garden? Unfortunately, I think we need to look to the rest of the line to understand it. The first line makes reference to cultivated chaos. Some of you might be thinking of the Black Garden when hearing this, but hear me out. Chaos, as we learned from the Season of the Deep cutscene, was kind of the calling card of the Light and the Traveler. It's also expressed by the actions of the Gardener in the Unveiling lore book. Both of these figures, if the Gardener does exist and is indeed different, have expressed a preference for things to be able to freely unfurl as they will regardless of consequences. The cultivated part of it, at first, makes me think of the Black Garden where life blooms ceaselessly, and where the Vex are noted as being its gardeners by figures who've explored the garden, such as Pujari. But then again, the Black Garden doesn't have a new heart, as we've said. So where is this cultivated chaos? I fear I know the answer. I fear it's inside the Traveler itself, deep within the Pale Heart. Cultivated chaos might make reference to the garden at the beginning of time from the Unveiling law book, if this was ever a reference to something akin to the Pale Heart, then we can suddenly start to understand and see the Witness's plans laid bare. I mean, for starters, is the inside of the Traveler cultivated chaos? I mean, look at some of the aesthetics of the locale. You literally have these giant cubes of terrain that are being filled and created with substance from our own minds. That sounds like cultivated chaos to me. And whilst I would remind you all that this is all a point of speculation, if it is correct, we suddenly understand exactly what the Witness is doing thanks to Scatter Signal. 
I think this might be the key to the entirety of the final shape. The churning singularity of shadow and mimicry beating again within cultivated chaos. I think the witness is trying to recreate the heart of the Black Garden inside the Traveler, attempting to make a copy of the veil within the Pale Heart so that it can merge light and dark. Now, why would it do this? The answer, if you know what the final shape is, is relatively simple. The Witness has tried something similar to this before. It has tried to merge the Traveler and the Veil together so that it might be able to gain the powers of both light and dark. By doing so, this would allow one to reshape the universe to whatever one desired. That is the truth of the final shape. This would allow that to happen. However, we also know that in previous instances, the Traveler and the Veil, for whatever reason, were not able to be combined. The Traveler fled. So maybe it's the case that with control over one of these entities, with control over this singularity of darkness, the Witness might finally be able to bring about the final shape on its own terms, cleansing the universe of life and creating a new universe of its own design. This would be its victory and our end. That's a lot of assumption to make from one sentence. There is a lot more. So mad as the possibilities are, let's keep moving. Because as this goes on, it almost seems to implicate that this isn't necessarily happening. And the reason I say this is because the lines seem to make reference to the Vex a whole lot more. Which leaves me with even further questions. Are there Vex inside the Pale Heart at this moment? Who knows? But I do think it's worth remembering that all of this is speculative. So, what does line 2 read? Well, it says, Minds orbit its gravity, to bridge communion with a voice, to move from parallel to entanglement. In this moment, we're getting more context about the churning singularity. Minds orbit its gravity and the voice they're bridging to commune with could make reference to two things in my mind. First is the more clear possibility of the soul divisive Vex trying to commune with the Witness. Secondly, there is the possibility that this is the many minds of the Witness's precursor civilization trying to commune with the Traveler. The first of these possibilities makes a lot of sense when you consider the wording of the line after this one. The line makes references to minds in a very Vex specific bit of lexicon here as is the note in the next line of a timeless structure. If this line is talking about the soul divisive, this is simply them talking about how they're still trying to bind themselves to the witness, hence the line of from parallel to entanglement. The second of these possibilities makes a more direct commentary on the witness's existence as an amalgamation of the precursor civilization's people, even with the Witness's scalp seeming to still radiate the faces of people long dead, which is likely to be a commentary on this particular part of its nature. If they were trying to bridge communion to a voice, this could be commentary on them trying to communicate with something inside the Traveler, or maybe with the Traveler itself. Whether this would end up being the Gardener, or whether it would be someone else that does still exist within the Traveler's confines isn't clear, but maybe after a very long time, the Witness's many minds are attempting to seek out answers. Why did the Traveler flee? Why did it abandon them? Why lift them up in the first place if it didn't want to cultivate their greatness? All of these questions, and yet maybe there are no answers yet. It would make a degree of sense for them to orbit the gravity of a newly constructed Black Heart, but it would equally make sense for the Vex minds of the Soul Divisive to do the same. To orbit the Black Heart literally would imply proximity though, meaning that it's more likely that this is the many minds of the Witnesses' precursor civilization. But then again, orbiting something does simply mean that they are influenced by it, so a more loose and metaphorical reading of this could simply imply that the Vex minds of the Soul Divisive are still intimately interested in the second Black Garden's heart. Moving from parallel to entanglement, is important regardless of circumstance. For the Vex, it'd imply binding themselves to the darkness. For the many minds of the Witness, it'd imply a combination between the darkness and the cosmic powers of the Pale Heart, with them at the center. Both possibilities are, needless to say, disastrous. The third line reads, They dream of a dark core, 
contained within a timeless structure, a suspended return to the primordial. As I said in the previous set of paragraphs, timeless structure is a very loaded phrase for the Vex, but it is possible that this has other meanings. Timeless structure could be a reference to the Witness's desire to see the world unchanged by the Traveler's chaos, or it could simply refer to the pale heart of the Traveler itself. The Dark Core is a little more nebulous, but at least for the Vex perspective, it might speak to their desire to see the Vex infused with darkness and capable of finally using paracausal abilities, being able to contest their rivals on the stage of survival in the endgame of the universe. A suspended return to the primordial is where all this gets interesting. For the Vex of the Soul Divisive, this might be indicating their aim of escaping the final shape by becoming a part of it. Suspending implies that this is them preventing their return to nothingness as the witness would desire it. I say nothingness, but the primordial part of the sentence is there for a reason. It's basically the implication that the universe would be remade from its base structure. Primordial goop would be the fate of everything that the witness sees, and as a result you would probably see that be the case for the Vex. A suspended return to that means they are no longer going to see their permanent destruction. The fourth line reads, If not for this truth, why kneel? If not for this truth, why does it elude definition? To me, this all reads yet again strongly as Vex. In my mind, I see the image of the Vex from Destiny 1's final mission in the heart of the Black Garden, in the actual act of praying, something the Vex normally do not do. They knelt and prayed in a practiced imitation of worship. The idea of the thing mentioned before, eluding definition, is probably then a reference to the heart of the Black Garden, which is paracausal in nature and therefore cannot be easily defined by the Vex. There's the outward possibility that some of this is in reference to the people who combined to become the Witness, but I think the Vex symbolism here reads far more strongly. The final line reads, Though not all agree on all, all agree on this. Sol is salvation. It's here that all this puzzles me a little. This sentence seems to be a reference again to the Vex, but I'm still not completely comfortable ruling out the Witness's many combined minds as a possibility on the side. To focus on the Vex, though, I think on a first reading this makes some sense, though not all agree on all, all agree on this. That seems like it's a reference to the many divergent minds and subtypes all attempting to answer the same question of how they're supposed to survive to become the final power at the end of the universe. The Hazen Vex of Venus tried manipulating time with the Vault of Glass. The Mercurial Vex tried to more accurately predict a victorious future with the Infinite Forest and the Vex mind known as Panoptes, and the Soul Divisive were intent on binding themselves to the darkness as a higher force that would be victorious thanks to its paracausal might. This is the crux of the not all agree on all bit if it is indeed referencing the Vex. There are many paths to victory, some minds have calculated things differently. All agree on this, Sol is salvation though, renders a very mysterious note for the end of this particular lore tab, and potentially tells us a lot about the Vex. If Sol itself is special, this means that there are key features that every Vex subtype would converge on Sol to control. Perhaps it's a series of key access points to the Black Garden for the Sol Divisive, Perhaps it's the Vault of Glass for the Hazen Lords. Whatever the case, seeing all the Vex subtypes agree on the importance of our system is curious, if that's what's actually happening here. Now I know that all the stuff I've just talked about is stuff I've talked about in the context of speculation, but I wanted to just ask one more question with this video, and that's simply, who is sending this message? Again, let's remember, if my theory that I put forward at the beginning is correct, this is a message that was sent by tropospheric scatter signal. Not guaranteed, but it feels likely given the name and the conventions and a whole bunch of other things. The sender of these messages would therefore be local to Neptune and within the visual horizons of Neomuna. So who could be sending this? It seems to be a report on the happenings of the Vex or potentially the interior of the Pale Heart of the Traveler. And yet, I don't know of anyone on Neomuna that would immediately have access to all of that information that's from our side. 
More importantly, the message seems to speak from a third-person perspective, which seems to imply that it isn't necessarily the Vex, even if there is a distinct possibility of that coming to pass. So, if the sender is local to Neomuna, who are they? It is possible that this is being relayed from somewhere else as part of a string of communication methods, and I think this opens up a few possibilities. That string of communications principle is one that needs to be examined, and if we are going to look at it, I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room. You know, the one above the formerly opulent Cabal Emperor. The Veil. If the messages are local to Neomuna, is it possible that the Veil is involved in the process of sending? After all, it is technically within the visual horizon of these monitor spikes if they are local to Neomuna. So, yeah, that in itself opens up a number of huge questions. Let's talk about some of them. Firstly, I think it's worth remembering that the Veil and Traveller are linked. The nature of this link between the Veil and the Traveller is something that seemingly is very poorly understood, but as it turns out, the former civilization that combined to become the Witness was able to understand it. They found the Veil using the signal of the Traveller, the two are linked on our plane of existence. So ultimately, it does mean that there is a way that the two of them are connected, and it might then be possible for them to send messages across the gap of space. If this message was outputted by the veil, it might have come directly from the Traveler or from something inside it. And let me be really clear, in all of the speculation of this video, that is a big if, even compared to everything else. But should it turn out to be the case, then maybe it allows for a few different theories to be possible. Firstly, it means that this could be a communication from the Vex of the Soul Divisive to the Witness. The Witness would likely not care whatsoever, given that an update or a report from the Vex is, I mean, at this point it's about to achieve the final shape, it doesn't care. Secondly, the communication could have come from within the Pale Heart itself, in which case maybe the Witness was reaching out to command the Vex. Why it would care to send such a communication in the first place is unknown. As I stated, the Witness likely doesn't care for the Vex. Thirdly, and most intriguingly, what if the message came from something else that resides within the Pale Heart? There has long been speculation of a Gardener-type figure, as portrayed in the Unveiling Law Book, but we also know that the Traveller has reached out to Guardians before to communicate in dreams and visions. It's even communicated to normal people during the Golden Age, Back in the day, they were known as speakers. Yes, like that speaker. They would receive vivid and unpredictable visions from the Traveller, and they would preach its word. Since the Witness entered the Pale Heart, we know that the Traveller has been mostly silent, albeit for the reported anguish and terror that Imaru has supposedly heard, as well as a few other ghosts. But what if the link between the Veil and the Traveller, or perhaps the combination of the two, has allowed them to send a more informed communication. What if this is something that comes from the Traveller itself? It provides that third-person perspective, and it gives an idea of why the Vex might be acting in the way they are, and what the Witness is doing within the Traveller's confines. It's possibly the most compelling theory I have in my mind, but it doesn't make it true whatsoever. If it is, though, perhaps Osiris didn't intercept it at all, Perhaps this was meant for him. Perhaps it was sent to him directly via the veil. One also needs to consider another possibility. This is a far more mundane one, but what if this is just a communication from one Vex subtype to another? There is, after all, a back door to the Black Garden in the local Neomuna space, and the Vex on Neomuna are of a different subtype to the Sol Divisive. If that's the case, Perhaps the Soul Divisive are trying to convince other Vex to join their cause, believing that they are about to acquire victory at last. There are some other, even wilder theories that lie way out in the far scope of possibility, but I don't think they're worth mentioning without further evidence. I could go on about Gaia forms and the Nine, but I don't think there's enough proof of either of them being immediately involved. If you want a weird video on all that, well, maybe I could look into it, but I'm going to need to bust out the conspiracy theory board again, and uh, at that point, Martin needs to do a bunch more editing. No matter what, this communication matters. I think that if it's indicative of what's happening in the Pale Heart, 
It tells us something vital about the Witness's plans, and hints as to what is coming in the final shape. Even if it isn't telling us about that, it's telling us a lot about the Vex and their obsession with Sol and the Darkness. However you slice it, scatter signal matters. Even if the weird theory about the Veil communications and tropospheric scatter proves to be incorrect, I think this coded message holds relevant secrets. The best I can do for all of you in this moment is arm you with potential knowledge and let you know that there is more that I've not talked about that is possible. That way, we might be prepared for whatever one of these outcomes turns out to be the truth. For the time being though, that's all from me for now, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have your own thoughts on what the scatter signal is trying to tell us, let me know down below in the comments section. And if you haven't got any thoughts on that, maybe tell me what you think of my theory. Do you think the Witness is trying to recreate the Heart of the Black Garden inside the Pale Heart of the Traveler? Who knows? It's something that we will discover in time. But, as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Parodasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside.